Okay, we're gonna play with this program right here on the repo. Here's the repo, Arden Labs Go Training. If I go to topics and go and profiling and trace, you'll also get to see the program. And you can play with this after the video as well or walk through it yourself as well if that's something you'd like to do. But I've got it here in VS Code and I have it here in my terminal. So let's get going. All right, maybe I can go just, no, nah, I'm gonna stay at this size here. Okay, so here's the idea. I wanted to write a little CLI tool that could take a set of news feeds from multiple sources. It could be one news feed or a million. And I want to be able to search those new feed, news feeds for a specific topic and kind of get a count for how many times that topic shows up in the news for that given day. So here's what a kind of a news feed looks like. This one's back from 2017. Uh, it's an XML document, it's an RSS XML document. You can see here that the, you know, this is news. Okay. So what I decided to do was start with writing a function that could process one document at a time and just see if I can get that to work. So here's my frequency function, takes a topic, takes a slice of documents in, in terms of the, the file name and location. And what I do is I range over that collection and then we, I broke it up into four stages, okay? There's a, 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 an open, so we open up the file there. Um, once we open it, then we can read it. Once we read the entire file of memory, it's XML, we can't really parse it as a stream. Um, we then take what we just read into memory off of disk and we uh, unmarshal it into some Go structures. These are the Go structures right here that we're gonna use. And then I can search the different items in the feed, checking the title and the description to see if that topic shows up. And if it does, then I've got a match and I increment the found um, counter. And we do that for every document that I have. And then I just report the, the, the found counter. There, there it is. So if we wanna play with this, it would be nice to play with a certain number of documents up front. And so, um, I am presenting on VS Code. Is that, you guys can't see the VS Code there? Hopefully you can. So what I wanted to do is to say, let's start with, here's our main. Let's start with 4,000 documents. I mean, eventually I'd like to process a million, but let's start at four and 4,000, sorry, but I don't want to add 4,000 documents to my repo. So this little, this little um, loop here takes that document and creates 4,000 like unique names. And then I just parse that kind of out just so I can pretend I got 4,000 documents. I, I mean, we're gonna process the same one 4,000 times, you get it. So I got 4,000 documents. I set the topic as president and then I call my frequency function. And then I write out to standard error because that's what log does, right? It's a standard error. Um, what, what we found. Okay, so I've got this little program here. Let's go and do the following. Let's go and build it. Okay, I'm building it on 119. Um, yes, I've made some changes here so I can do some live coding as well, okay? But everything I'm gonna do ends up being what you're seeing. So I've done a build of this and now I want to run it. So we're just gonna run this trace program here. Uh, and in fact, I can even just put time in front of this. And what I'm going to do is run everything twice, just so kind of the machine is a little warmed up on each one of these runs. So I'm always, I'm going to run everything twice. And what we see here with our little Go program is that we found that term president 28,000 times processing those 4,000 files. And it took roughly 1.6 seconds 
to process those documents. Now also understand that I am on a M1 ARM processor, uh, 10 cores, all that good stuff, right? So if you're running this at home locally, you may have some different numbers and machines are gonna be a little different, but for the benchmark here, it's taking 1.6 or 1,615 milliseconds to execute. Okay, now if I was only ever going to run 4,000, maybe 10,000 files at a time, that's fast enough for me, right? I mean, may not be the fastest this program could be, but it's fast enough. So the problem with saying that I want it to run faster is usually the cost of complexity. I always think about this idea of the faster you want it to be, the more clever you probably have to be, the more complex that code has to be. And so there's this sort of scale, right? This like, you know, there's the, the weighing scale where right now the code is pretty simple, but we've got kind of this performance. And if that performance is good enough, then I don't want to start tipping the scale the other way where, where things get complex. So, but I did tell you that I, I wanted to process a million documents. And for processing a million documents, that's probably not fast enough. Okay, so ideally it might be nice to try to identify a way to make this program run a little faster. But in order to do that, we've got to kind of know what we're targeting. We don't want to guess. The one nice thing about Go and all of Go, Go's different toolings is that you don't have to guess about things. Now, just because of time, we could try to use a CPU profile for this um, or profiling in general. But there is a problem with profiling um, that does kind of come into play with this program. And I use profiling effectively all the time. So it's not a problem with profiling in general, just with this particular program. And that is a profiler can only show you what is happening in your program. And there are times where you need to see also what is not happening. And so in this particular case, just to save some time, if I were to use a profile, it's not gonna give me a lot of information. It's gonna show me that I'm spending a lot of time in system calls, opening and reading files. And so what I need is that combination of seeing what is and isn't happening in the program to kind of get a better idea of where we could, or what we could change to improve the performance. And this is where tracing comes in. Tracing will give us the ability to see both. So there's several ways that you can add tracing or get to tracing information out of your Go program. Today, what we're gonna do is use the standard libraries trace package. Since we have a program that starts and stops and it runs fairly quickly, um, we could just attach a trace start and a deferred trace stop to the beginning of our program. The trace package is part of that runtime. So this will um, give us the trace and I'm gonna tell it to write to standard out. So it's nice and easy. I don't have to open up any files here. We'll just do a redirect. And we'll write it to standard out. All of my um, extra information is using the log package that writes to standard error, life is good. So I'm gonna save this information here. I'm gonna build, build it. And this time I'm gonna run it again, but I'm going to write the everything coming out of standard out to t.out. And once again, I'm gonna run it twice. Now, you could see that this program took a little bit more time to run, about 100 milliseconds, right? But who cares, right? We, we're generating trace information. I expect this to run a little bit slower. In fact, if you look, we generated 1.4 million bytes of trace information just over that one and a half plus seconds. Now this trace information is what we want. I need to be able to look and read this trace information. So what's kind of cool is go tool trace will allow us to read all that trace information. Now in 119, 
the GO team added a large amount of documentation to this homepage for the trace tool. We didn't have that in 118. If you're running 118 or lower, you're just gonna see the links with a little bit of information potentially at the bottom. But now you've got a lot of good information here you can read. I'm not gonna read this. What I wanna do is click on this trace program. Now, I let me just click on it. Something that you need to be aware of here is that the trace tool is leveraging um, tooling that is built inside of the Chrome browser, the Chrome browser. So you can only use Chrome to launch this. If you're not a fan of Chrome, unfortunately you're gonna have to install it if you wanna play with any of this tooling. Wouldn't it be good to run like dot dot out to append the end of the file without, no, I don't wanna append. This trace is like a start from beginning to end. So I'd rather always create a new file when we do this. Now, if you look at this trace, I'm gonna move the Q&A down here out of my way. Uh, a couple of things that you'll notice, they're using these really bright Pascal colors, which makes it really hard of a tool to present. So if you're having a little bit of trouble seeing some of the colors, I apologize to you now, there's not much I can do. But there's a lot of information here that we can gather. And what I wanna just do is spend a couple of minutes kind of breaking down the basics of this information if you've never seen it before. So what's kind of cool is we've got information that goes all the way down to the uh, microsecond. I can sort of open up this graph and you can start to see the timeline go thinner and thinner and thinner. And you can also see that we can kind of zoom in to certain areas of these graphs. But let's kind of start here on the left, just for a second here. I wanna bring this in a little bit closer. So we can see the number of go routines at any given point in time down to the microsecond. We can see a heap graph, which I'll explain. You can see the number of operating system threads. You can see the number of garbage collections that have taken place, syscalls. And then you can see that I have six of my 10 cores involved in processing um, the different Go routines involved in this Go program. Now, what I wanna do is kind of start to gather some information about this Go program. And at the same time, I can kind of share with you the things that, at least for this program, that are important. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this tool right here at the bottom. And that will let me get a general idea, there we go, of how long this program actually took. And you can see here that it's 1,736 milliseconds. So I'm gonna do the following just for our sort of talk here. I'm gonna add a new file that's called, uh, I don't know, build.txt. What I'm gonna do here is I wanna kind of record this information that I see here. So we say like, like total runtime, right? Total runtime is what? It was 1736 milliseconds, okay? Um, and I'm gonna say that this is for our kind of our first version of the program at this point, right? We'll, we'll, we'll do more with that later. So total runtime, that's how much, how, how long that program ran for. Okay, cool, let me clear that out. Now, what I'm gonna do is kind of come back in and I wanna show you a couple of things here in the beginning. You see all these, you see the, the heap graph here, okay? So how do we read the heap graph? There's two different colors. They represent two pieces of information. The orange that you see represents how much memory is in use on the heap at any given time. So if I, if I zoom in here on one of these edges and I kind of click to the top, I bring this up. You can see here that the heap um, was at about four meg when we hit the peak and we kind of dropped. In fact, if I go to the next peak, you're also gonna see four meg. Now, what's going on there? Just, just for some background. Um, by default, when the GC percentage knob is set to 100%, which is the default setting for the GC percentage knob, 
then the first garbage collection will take place at four meg of memory in use. And what we're seeing here is the Go program reaching that four meg and then performing, if you look underneath it, you see a blue, performing a garbage collection, which is then reducing the amount of memory in use. And then the program starts running again. And once it gets to another four meg of memory in use and another four meg of memory in use and another four meg of memory in use, well, another GC occurs. The garbage collector is essentially allowing this Go program to maintain a four meg heap, really small. Um, and the job of the garbage collector is to try to maintain the smallest heap possible while giving the program good application throughput, right? Trying to maintain a good pace of the GC while keeping the garbage, I'm sorry, keeping the memory small. Remember, you're running on cloud computing where, where resources are.